Hey everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. I am very excited for this video because in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make your own almond milk. And then I'm also going to show you a recipe that you can make using the leftover nut pulp. So I've been making my own nut milks for a pretty long time now, um, ever since I started to be more environmentally conscious and realize how easy it was for me to make my own nut milk, I've been doing that. And now that my boyfriend lives with me, he likes to drink almond milk and I make him a big batch of almond milk every week to take into work so he can make his smoothies for lunch. So we've been making almond milk for a while. It tastes better than store-bought, I promise. Once you make your own nut milk, the store-bought stuff just honestly tastes like soap to me. There's just like so many preservatives in it. So it loses the true flavor of the almonds. And there's also a bunch of gums and thickeners in a lot of nut milks and in some milks even add other things like oils or other preservatives that you don't really need. To make this recipe, all you essentially need are almonds and water. And I am in the process also, in case you're curious, of making an ultimate guide to nut milk for my blog. So I wanna show you all the different ways you can make nut milks. We're using almonds, cashews, pumpkin seeds, a ton of different things. A lot of you guys are curious and ask me about making nut milk, especially on Instagram. So I figured I would go ahead and show you how to make almond milk today. And just know that that is coming soon. When it is available, I'll have it linked in the recipe below. So we're going to be making almond milk today. I'm going to give you a ton of different options and pro tips and supplies that you'll need in order to make it. And then we're going to use the almond pulp, which you'll see in a few minutes into this video, to make some cookies. These are banana nut pulp cookies with chocolate chips in them because everything's better with chocolate. And what is a better combination than cookies and milk? So without further ado, let's get on to the recipes. So the only real ingredient you need to make almond milk is almonds, but the amount of almonds is going to depend on how creamy you want your milk to be. So I created a creaminess scale, which is up on the screen here for you. I prefer to use half a cup of almonds to four cups of water. Uh, you can go down to a fourth of a cup, which is the same macronutrients as store-bought milk, but there is no extra fillers or things in the milk to make it creamy. So it tastes a little watery to me. And if you want to go up to the thickness of say coffee creamer, you can do up to two cups of almonds almonds for four cups of water. And then there are a few optional add-ins you can add to your almond milk, which includes salt. Um, all store-bought almond milk contains salt, so I don't really consider this optional, but you can keep it optional if you want. The second one is vanilla extract, if you like your almond milk to have that vanilla flavor to it. And the third and final one is sweetener. I prefer my almond milk to be unsweetened, but if you like it a little sweet, you can use things like maple syrup, even sugar, brown sugar, coconut sugar, or a couple of dates. And we're not trying to make almond butter here, so we are also going to need some water. I prefer to use filtered water. I find my almond milk tastes better and lasts longer. So if you have a water filter, you should use that. So the first step is to soak our almonds. You need to do it for at least four to six hours, but I typically do it for at least overnight. You're going to add your almonds to a glass jar or a Tupperware and then just cover them with enough filtered water. They are going to like one and a half times in size. They don't quite double. So just keep that in mind when you add water to the jar, then you can seal it and pop it in your fridge. And then the next day, for me at least, you can take it out of the fridge. I just wanted to show you guys. The water is going to look a little bit cloudy. This happens when you soak a lot of nuts and it's totally okay and normal. Your almonds didn't go bad. We kept them in the fridge, so it's fine. But at this point, you are going to drain your almonds and rinse them really well to get this weird cloudy stuff out of the way. And actually, I would suggest that when you soak your nuts, you store them in a wider container and not a mason jar like this one, as you can see here, um, because they actually kind of get stuck on the bottom and it's hard to empty them out. So after you've rinsed your almonds, you're going to add them to a blender with your water. You do need a high power blender for this recipe. I will link the one I use below as well as a few other options that will also work to make almond milk. So you're going to add your almonds in along with any additional optional add-ins like I mentioned earlier that you want to use. Typically, I like to add salt and then I also add vanilla extract. I like my almond milk unsweetened. I just don't really like things too sweet. So you're going to seal your blender up and then you're going to blend this mixture on high, on the highest setting possible for two minutes. You want to do for at least two minutes because this is going to pulverize the almonds and as you can see, start to make the liquid nice and creamy, but you don't want to over blend it because when you over blend your almonds, they will go bad faster after you make your almond milk and put it in your fridge. So this is what it looks like once you're done. FYI, this foam on the top is actually really, really delicious. So I usually take a spoonful or two and drink it while I'm making almond milk, but you're going to take your blender and now we're going to strain our nut milk. And to do this, you will need a nut milk bag. This is an example of what one 
looks like. You can purchase them online. Some grocery stores sell them too. Uh, and they just open up. You're going to pour the nut milk through and it's like a fine mesh strainer. Um, they're pretty affordable and they last a really long time. I just wanted to show you the one I actually use. It is very stained from the almond milk, which again, this is totally normal and it gets creased. I would just suggest also that you get one that's double seamed. So it's really well enforced because you are going to be squeezing stuff out of the bag. So now you're going to set a large bowl and pop your little nut milk strainer bag in there and then just go ahead and pour your almond milk into the bag and as you can see some of the almond milk is actually already filtering out of the bag without any extra pressure from your hands but the almond milk does mix with the liquid so we are going to need to squeeze some of it out of the bag you're going to do this by as you can see here you're going to sort of squeeze the top down and use your hands actually to twist the bag and work it down so that way almond pulp is getting almond pulp almond pulp is getting squished down to the bottom of the bag and it won't be stuck where your hands are uh, you just want to do this slowly and carefully and mix it up and you know it takes i don't know maybe about a minute total um, but you're just going to keep squeezing and get as much liquid out as possible because we want to milk those almonds real good and after this, that's pretty much it. You have your freshly made almond milk. There will still be a slight layer of sort of creamy foam on top, which I also really enjoy drinking. If you wanna make yourself a latte right now, the almond milk is still warm from the blender and it's really, really delicious. Um, but now we're going to store our almond milk. So I like to store everything in glass. Um, I'm just not a really big fan of plastic. So I use these wide mouth mason jars. And another thing I would recommend is getting a wide mouth funnel. So this one works with both the narrow mouth mason jars and the wide mouth. And I just find it so much easier to pour your almond milk in they don't sell this exact model anymore but i'll link a similar one on amazon and i just pour my almond milk into my mason jars and that is pretty much it if you couldn't tell already i actually made a double batch in this video just because we drink so much almond milk and we love it so much um but also Pro tip, don't seal your almond milk all the way because like I said, it's still a little warm and it'll be harder to open later. So wait till it cools completely. You can even put it in the fridge and then just tighten the lid on it a little bit later. But that's it for our almond milk, guys. But don't forget, we have the almond pulp. So what the heck are we going to do with that? It looks kind of strange. It's like the leftover almond fiber. It has this weird brown color. I'm really uh, hyping it up, aren't I? But it actually is pretty usable in certain recipes as I'm going to show you how to make almond pulp cookies in a few seconds. But I just wanna say, if you don't have enough almond pulp to make cookies right away, you can store it in a Tupperware and just freeze it and then defrost it when you're ready to make some cookies. So now we're going to get on to that part of the recipe. In a large bowl, we are going to first mash some bananas. You want your bananas to be brown and spotty because this makes them sweeter and we're not using too, too much sugar in this recipe. Um, kind of like the same thing with banana bread. I just like to peel my bananas and then break them up into little chunks and put them in the bowl because this makes them easier to mash later. Then you just mash all of them up with a fork and then once you have a nice mixture, you're going to add in your remaining ingredients, which includes some maple syrup, some peanut butter. I recommend natural creamy peanut butter. You could use chunky, I guess, if you wanted some extra texture. We're also going to add in some baking powder and some salt, and then we're going to mix all of this together. We want to get a uniform consistency with this first. They're sort of like the wet ingredients for our mixture. Now we're going to add in some ground flax seed as well as some coconut flour. And these are very absorptive flours, so we're going to mix that into our mixture again. And then last but not least, we are going to add in our almond pulp. We'll be using one cup total for this recipe and the almond pulp does have a pretty interesting almost kind of spongy texture to it so you do have to work it a little bit into the dough but i choose to add it last because it, as you can see it makes the dough really really thick and it's easier to have all of the other ingredients be well incorporated before you add in the almond pulp or things might not mix completely and actually we do have one final step which is adding chocolate chips because you always add that in last in the recipe so you can just add them in and then fold them into the batter and you're good to go if you don't want to add chocolate chips you don't have to but chocolate just makes everything better you know you know also if you don't want to use peanut butter you could totally use another nut butter too but regardless you're going to scoop these cookies out they're not going to spread out too much in the oven so you will want to spread them out first with your hands and then just place them on a baking tray lined with a silicone mat and repeat this process with the rest of the dough 
and this makes about 15 cookies in total and I just like to top mine with a few extra chocolate chips to make them look prettier and even more chocolatey. But we're going to bake them in an oven for about 20 to 22 minutes at 350 degrees Then just let them sit on the baking tray for a few minutes and pop them all off and set them on a cooling rack to let them cool completely or you can dig in while they're warm and fluffy and soft too. That is also equally delicious but regardless you got a big batch of almond pulp cookies now. You used up your almond pulp, you probably used up some spotty bananas you didn't know what you were going to do with and they just have a really nice fluffy and creamy texture and I love little bites of chocolate in them and they got a really nice banana flavor too. It's almost like banana chocolate chip bread and cookie form and they are great with almond milk so what a better combo than that. So there you have it guys. I hope that this proved to you that making your nut milk is actually really, really easy. After you make it, it will keep in the fridge, I would say between like three to four days. Um, you can push like five to six. It just depends on the batch, honestly. Sometimes I notice things go bad faster than others. Uh, the longer you let your nuts soak, the sooner it will go bad. And then also if you over blend your nuts, they will go bad faster as well. Uh, but generally speaking, I think that all the nuts tend to last about the same amount of time in the fridge itself. I get a lot of questions asking if it's actually cheaper to make your own nut milk. Um, Initially, I would say no, because you have to buy a blender, and that's really expensive. But if you're using that for other things, and blender aside, I think it's pretty comparable. Honestly, I don't really compare myself just because in terms of waste, I prefer to make my own nut milk, and for taste, I prefer to make my own nut milk. And I have a few stores in my area where almonds are actually relatively cheap. Um, so maybe I'll pause the video right here and do a little cost comparison for you right here on the screen. So the cost of raw almonds is obviously going to depend a lot depending on where you live. So I went to a few different stores and checked it out and the price varies pretty drastically, honestly. But store-bought almond milk in general costs between 250 to 350 per eight cups. So I did some simple math, which you can pause on the screen if you really wanna see right here. But ultimately I did find out that indeed it is possible to make almond milk cheaper than the store. Store-bought almond milk costs about 29 cents per cup and Costco, Natural Grocers, Winco, and Amazon all sell almonds at a price where it is cheaper per cup, but it is also important to note that this homemade version I'm using for reference is two to three times as creamy as the store. If you wanted to go down to a fourth of a cup, which is the most similar macronutrient wise to store-bought almond milk, pretty much all of these would be less expensive. So that's pretty cool. But that aside, I'm gonna do a little taste test. I got a nice glass of cold almond milk and a cookie. The almond milk is like smooth and rich and creamy. Obviously, depending on how many nuts you use, it will be more or less creamy but I love this because it actually tastes like almonds. And if you let your almonds sit for a little bit of extra time in the fridge, they get that almond extract taste, which I really, really love. It kind of reminds me of a maraschino cherry. Some people like it, some people hate it, but I personally really, really love it. We go through this stuff like crazy, but honestly, at the end of the day, as long as you remember to soak your almonds, it only takes like five minutes total to make. And now it's time for our cookie taste test. These cookies, the first day you make them, they're definitely the best. They're a little bit more crisp on the outside and they're nice and fluffy, I would say. I wouldn't say they're chewy or gooey. They get a little chewier as time goes on, but because of the almond pulp and the coconut flour in them, they have more of a fluffy taste, kind of like a lighter brownie cookie kind of thing, except they're like vanilla. But they taste great. The texture is nice and light and fluffy. And honestly, these cookies took me a lot of tries to make because the almond pulp itself, it's like pure fiber and it's very like dense and almost like when you eat it, it dries your mouth out. So my first batch of these cookies, I had to drink so much water, like even just eating one. But these, I feel like it's the perfect balance because you have the healthy fat from the peanut butter and then the maple syrup helps to balance things out a little bit as well as the flaxseed to give it more of a cookie taste to it. They're still fluffy and like a little bit dense, but they're really good. And I also think it's a perfect way to use up your leftover bananas and to dip in your almond milk that you just made. Oh God. I'm just gonna keep that in the video because I think hopefully at least some of you will find that hilarious. Okay, I'm gonna end this video here now and clean my mess up. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below telling me you wanna see more videos like this, or if you have any video suggestions, you could let me know and I would be happy to add that to my list as well. And if you wanna to subscribe to my channel, you can click that button right down there. I post two new videos every single week. And hope you guys have an awesome day, whatever time of day it is for you. And I hope to see you in the next video. Talk to you later. Bye.